It did it again. It worked last week and it didn't work this week. Archie! I think we should just accept that it's going to happen. My son, do not make me scream at you. Good boy. Uh, <laughs> okay, there we go. I should probably hit pause on this one over here. Anyway, hi guys. Um, it's a bad night. It's a bad night to be a Birds fan, that's for sure. Granted, that's that's most of the last like 65 or so nights since the merger. <laughs> It has not been a good night to be a Birds fan. Most nights the Birds have played. Oh, yeah, fair. Yeah. So, that's uh, that's never ideal. And Friday night, Friday the 13th, wasn't a good night to be a uh, camp counselor. No, Friday the 13th was not a good night to be a camp. Sorry, I was looking at the, the audio stream bit rate thing, and I'm like, that doesn't seem right since people can apparently hear us. Uh, <laughs> let me open up the thing. It says, okay. Now it says stream status excellent. All right, thanks YouTube, very helpful. Um, thank you. Come again. Anyway, yeah, uh, Brian Johnson should. Uh, y you know what's funny, Aiden? What is funny, Aiden? That the guy who ruined Star Wars was named Ryan Johnson, and the guy who ruined my hopes and dreams is named Brian Johnson. So any person with the name I am Johnson just immediately killed, yep. thrown into the sea. I was gonna say taken into questioning, but let's you know. kill this man. <laughs> Well, we know where you stand at the very least. Although I gotta say, I'm obviously I'm kidding, but no, I'm I'm very frustrated. I thought that I thought that it couldn't get much worse than Shane Steichen. Fair. And then it got so much worse than Shane Steichen. There was one redeeming quality from that game. What? I don't know which announcer it was, but somebody truly believes in that booth that Jalen Hurts is a salmon. <laughs> and twice. I want to meet the man. Because first he referred to him as a salmon covered in Vaseline, and then less than two minutes later called him the slipperiest salmon out there. And I just gotta know, what's in his coffee I'm, and how do I get some? I think it was Mark Sanchez. Might have been. Which is just funny for its own reasons. I can only hope he knows our show and he was stealing our bit. <laughs> I don't think so. But Lore Lodge, and a, Lore Lodge and NFL collab coming soon, I promise. Um, well, if Ohio State can trademark the term the, yeah. then we could probably trademark salmon. Yeah. Also, I would like to point out that, you know, we, we, we are working on these collabs. It's just right now we're consulting for Disney's Pirates of the Missouri. Yes. Um, <laughs> Talks are ongoing. Talks are ongoing. Not with Disney. No. Mostly between the two of us. Yeah. But they Even are there. happening. Yeah, you know, it's on on the stream we're clearly the best of friends off stream you know he he has to run out of here while i shoot at him yeah yeah it's it's very it's disruptive getting, to the neighbors it's getting hard to dodge yeah, you know? yeah my aim's getting a lot better it is <laughs> excuse you listen peanut gallery <laughs> this show just somehow continues to get more chaotic yep that is true <laughs> Anyway, uh, the the title of the stream and the thumbnail of the stream are slightly different. The title of this or the thumbnail for the stream um, says, you know, like the legends behind Jason Voorhees, and, and the thumbnail says Jason Voorhees doesn't make sense, and uh, and that's that's partially a, an algorithmic choice so that I can I can see uh, which has more effect on the video, and then also partially uh, Jason Voorhees does not make sense as a character. What's well, true? He's very inarticulate. You know, a lot of the time, I I do I do think you know ah maybe I do talk too much on the show. Maybe Aiden should should pipe in more. You know, and 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 then I'm grateful you. that you remind me that that's not the case. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'll take my corner. <laughs> I can't remember what we were talking about now. Uh, oh the right, between yeah, the yeah. Thumbnail and, yeah, yeah. So anyway, Jason Voorhees as a character. It's something that I hadn't really considered that I came across when I was doing the research for this video, which was that horror movies in recent years mm -hmm. often can be big budget. The Conjuring has had pretty enormous budgets for horror movies. Antlers was pretty sizable and high quality. You know, when you look at modern horror movies, some of them are still campy and, you know, feel like the original Friday the 13th and Halloween and all of those. Whoa. But what? Uh, I wasn't sure. Wow, the first one only had a budget of twenty million for a horror movie. That's, that's a, a lot. lot for a horror movie, but yeah, still. 
only gro oh grossed over 319 million yeah it's impressive yeah so what's you know what's fascinating though hmm. blair witch which we're covering next week uh blair witch project had a budget of it was something like fifteen thousand dollars or sorry yeah uh, it was 20, then 25, then 35, and then the official number was 60. Yes. It made 250 million. Yep. Like 246.8. Yeah. Or no, 248.6. Just a, a staggering amount of money. Yeah. And then the sequel flopped horrendously. Well, what's fascinating is the sequel made 47 million mm -hmm. against a budget of, I think, like 2 million. Yeah. The. 2016 sequel budget of i think it was 15 million i wonder how much it made i'm assuming it came in under budget 45 million the movie that made the least amount of money yeah was the most expensive one yeah <laughs> does not surprise me in this does not surprise me but I think that the part of the charm of the original Blair Witch is the found footage format. We'll get into more of that next week. I, I don't know that I would say the same personally regarding the charm of Friday the 13th, the, the 1980 one, because sometimes you go back and you watch an old movie and you're like, ah, you know, that's really cool how they used to do things. You know, you watch Star Wars. Oh my God. The, the stuff they did was incredible. Lord of the Rings, same way. The practical effects are insane oh yeah the best part of friday the 13th production wise i really do think was the costume and makeup design for for the first one for the the villain or for the original friday the 13th just overall just overall i think the, the that characters? was the best part of the of the film the original one you know what so you really hated the rest. Oh, I did not like the movie. Okay. <laughs> no, I thought it was... I, I mean, it. listen, I'm not going to call it the worst movie ever made. I got to say, as I was skipping through editing the video... They definitely got better. Don't yeah, get me wrong. Yeah. Like, the first one feels like something that you and I could make in a weekend. Yeah. Um, fair. That's the problem. Yeah. Is like, if you and I made that in a weekend, I'd be proud of it. Fair. However... <laughs> We didn't, and we won't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's... Skipping through it while I was editing, there were, like, some interesting attempts at nice shots. Uh-huh. That's the one with the staircase, right? Which one? The first one? The staircase. Wheelchair staircase? Or is that the second That's one? the second one. Second one, yeah. yeah. That... Wow. That was a rough one. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how... Who... I guess it was the early 80s, so there was a lot of, like, you know, white powders involved. But, like, just who came up with that idea? And think about how many people that had to go through. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I also... Yeah, let's do it. I, I have this theory in my head right now that the reason that in the 90s, mm -hmm. basically every single piece of physical and digital media, whether it was movies, books, TV shows, math textbooks, mm -hmm. had a guy in a wheelchair on it. I'm wondering if they were just so abusive towards the uh, the wheelchair folk in the 80s that we had to come full circle. Wouldn't be surprised. Like, Wouldn't be surprised. Because that, that felt like a hate crime. A little bit, didn't it? <laughs> a little bit. For those who haven't seen the film, what we're talking about is a scene where one of the characters named Mark... Spoilers, by the way. Um, in case... I, I figured you would all assume there were spoilers in this, but just in case. Also, it's a slasher film. What do you expect? Yeah, it's... People die. Um, you know everybody's gonna die. Yeah. Anyway, uh, <laughs> the point is, there is a scene wherein Mark rolls outside on... It's just everything about the scene is comical, is comically bad. And it would be really funny if it weren't a serious attempt at horror. Yeah. Which, you look back and... They weren't taking themselves completely seriously. But there was an attempt at being you know at being serious at not making it a complete joke yeah in this scene mark who has previously told us that uh the doctors have said he'll never walk again but he's not so sh he, he doesn't quite agree you know he's gonna he's sure he's gonna walk again we were and who has told a girl that uh you know who, who asked him 
you know, so you're you're totally paralyzed from the waist down. He told her that he gets by just fine. So, you know, what's really going on here is that Mark uh, is not being driven by rational thinking, but by pure thirst. So he's a man in his early 20s in the yeah. 1980s. Understandable. Understandable. Anyway, he goes outside to look for the girl that he will be uh, kissing later that evening, uh, as far as he's aware. Mm -hmm. And he sits there staring off the porch, not really moving at all, for a good long while. Like, at least 20 seconds. He's just sta sitting there like, Vicky? 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 Not, l maybe, like, you ever play, uh, the, like, the old, you ever play Warzone on, a, on an Xbox versus on a PC? Yes. You know how the field of view is, like, oh, very yeah. different? Yeah, 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 That man has Warzone 1 Xbox field of view. Like, incredible. 80. 80. Remind <laughs> me, it's, it, that, it was it was one shot, right? Uh, there were, well, I'm talking about two separate shots here. One of okay. them is the one where, <laughs> uh, the shot I, I know you're talking about is the one where he goes down the stairs. No, no, there's that. Uh, but like, oh, which one are you if, talking about? No, that shot where he comes out on the, on the, yeah. the it's one shot from when he opens the door and just sitting there the whole time looking out, right? I think so. Okay, yeah, that's called not getting your coverage. <laughs> um, the reason it was that long is because in the editing room, they realized they had nothing to cut to. Yep. So they just had to let that play out. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't because they didn't get coverage, then that was just an interesting editing. Well, episode. no, because I'm remembering it goes from... It has the front of his face, and then it goes to the back of his head to show you Jason approaching him. Because that was one thing that they used a lot in the oh, movie that was criticized heavily, if I remember correctly, was the use of uh, first-person perspective camera. Interesting. That they were basically using the camera as a as a character. Um, that was a criticism. It was there. There was it had mixed reviews. Got it. Some some of the more traditional filmmakers were like, "We don't like this." Fair. And then some of the you know the younger people were like, "All right, well you know it was a cool experiment." At, at the very least. I don't blame it. I'm not a huge, like, villain perspective camera person in movies, yeah. but... Uh, it happens right after that, yeah, yeah. If, you want, if you're looking at it. But yeah, uh, they go to show the back of his head. But no, he rolls down the stairs. A, a quite ridiculous amount, which it, is... It, it's, again, stellar. one of those situations where it's like, if this was a comedy film, that would have been hilarious. Yes. But they were trying. No, it was supposed to be scary. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it really is a long scene because it it's one shot up until there, and even that's a long. Yeah, sorry, we're we're watching the, yeah. the film. Yeah, I, he's I got it pulled up right now because he wanted to check. But, but yeah, yeah I it's... wanted to check to see if it was multiple shots or not. It's multiple shots. They just made the choice, I guess, to try and build tension. But like a dude sitting on a porch in a wheelchair, especially the fact that he doesn't even like. Yeah, it's literally just. Yeah. He's like an NPC in the video game. Yeah, he's yeah. just sit he's literally just sitting there just looking around. Like, there's no terror on his face. Yep. And he's not concerned for himself. Mm -hmm. So, like, other than the implication... Yep. Which isn't that heavy to begin with. You're mm -hmm. just like, is he, something going to happen here? Like, he is the, the, the NPC when you're playing a stealth video game and you, you know, shoot one guy and the other guy watches it happen and you go hide in the corner and the the stealth timer goes down yes and he's like hmm must have been my imagination while standing next to the body <laughs> that is mark <laughs> poor mark oh you know if only if only he hadn't gone out looking for vicky he might have walked again <laughs> <laughs> the poor guy he was so he had the power of positive thinking on his side exactly. he was manifesting his legs moving mm -hmm. poor guy his legs did move very rapidly down the stairs yeah just at the same speed and position of the rest of his body. Exactly, that was the problem. Yeah. Um, I do think it was funny that one of the one of the most common bits of feedback I was seeing on the video was people loved the euphemisms. Oh, hundred <laughs> percent. Which I was like, sweet. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was loving them while we were recording. Okay, good. Yeah, I wasn't sure how they'd play, but yeah, those were uh, those were fun to fun to write. Um, the movie itself, the what what I think was most interesting for me as somebody who is also a writer uh and and who you know views a lot of this stuff and knows the the backstory to a lot of it i've always you know thought about horror movies i guess 
in the sense that people are making movies about monsters that exist, or at least that, you know, exist in our heads that yeah. have been told about before. You watch The Conjuring or Insidious, you know, uh, Midsummer, like any of those movies, it's always demons, witchcraft, ghost, vampire, werewolf. Or even like aliens. Yeah, there's something in there that is recognizable. Yeah. And while I don't think it was deliberate, they kind of created an original monster with Jason Voorhees. Yes. Because he's human. As far as we know, for the first four epi- the first four installments, he's definitely human. Yeah. Um, but he's got some form of megacephaly or hydrocephaly. Uh, he's incredibly deformed, and he seems to be able in a in the um, let's see, it's in part two. He takes a machete through his left clavicle. Like, should sever yep. this entire joint, require surgery, yep. within moments, like hours, he's swinging stuff around with his arm again. High school coaches would love him because oh, yeah. he is the embodiment of walk it off. off. Oh, yeah. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> he would have absolutely killed it as a defensive lineman. 100%. Uh, you know, ugh, good lord. Just absolutely murdered the competition. Yeah. Oh, I thought yours was intentional. Nope. <laughs> it wasn't. I was just taking it a step further to go you, with it. You did a good job. Thank you. Um, um, no, the euphemisms were, in fact, for YouTube censorship. It was just, I knew there was a... I could have... Originally, I wrote holding hands for all of them. Yeah. And then I was like, ah, come on, that's lazy. I can do better than that. Um, and I had, I had written stuff along the lines of, you know, meets his end via an axe or something like that. And I was like, ah, oh, no, we can. Yeah. Yeah. The same reason he did the euphemisms is also the same reason you didn't see any of the kills because, yeah. you know, we're not going to show R rated gore on YouTube. Yeah. PG 13 rated gore, perhaps. Potentially. Potentially. G rated gore. Absolutely. Though I'm not sure what that would be. Speaking of PG 13 rated things. I just watched Pacific Rim for the first time yesterday. You, that's the first time you've seen Pacific Rim? Yeah, I'd never seen it. Was it was like a major blockbuster a decade ago. I know. I when I was younger, I thought it was like a dumb thing. Um and like I just I was like, "Oh, it's just Transformers meets Godzilla." Like I don't really want to Well, see yeah, it. kind of. But then Cat was like, "We need to watch it." And I was like, mm-hmm. "Okay." And she's loving. She's like, "You're going to love the soundtrack." And can confirm it's incredible. Yeah. But yeah, I just like I I I over I underestimated the movie for mm-hmm. a decade. And then finally watching it then, I was like, wow. Solid film. This probably would have, like, changed things for me. I don't know what they would have been, (laughs) but, like, seeing, uh, what's his name? Um, Well, you might not have been gay. It's true. I don't know. Seeing uh, (laughs) seeing Ron Perlman in that outfit. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. What, you know, what was the, the robot movie? The boxing robot movie with Hugh Jackman? Oh, um... Oh... It had the rabbit, right? Like the rabbit robot? Yeah, I know, yeah. Oh, well, hang on, we gotta look it up. God, what was it called? Somebody in chat's gonna know. Um, Real Steel. Real Steel. That was another good, like, kind of silly, low sci-fi movie. This is really... I liked that one. I liked Real Steel. I forgot that existed. I, I haven't seen any of the Transformers movies robots? in a while. The animated one? The oh yeah 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 yeah. Have you ever gone back and rewatched it? Because there's some jokes in there that we definitely didn't catch when yeah. we were younger that are like the babies come in boxes and they have to physically put them together, and so the baby arrives and then the, the wife is like, now comes the fun part, making the baby, and like sits the box down. And you're yeah, like, yeah, yeah. oh yeah. okay, yeah. I get it now. <laughs> now the, the biggest thing that sticks out in my mind uh, when. I think back to childhood films is that they had Martin Scorsese play a puffer fish in, yeah. in, in, uh, in that movie, which just for some reason was great. I wish Scorsese acted more throughout this career because it was so good. He's a marvelous director, but that was incredible. It's all very silly. It really is. But no, it was also reminding me that like the, the blockbusters from that era mm-hmm. are such a unique time capsule of cinema history because they're all hyper cyan and orange. And they're all like just extremely like they all have that Michael Bay feel. What are we talking about? Blockbuster films from like 2009 to Got 2014. It. Okay. 
it's just such an interesting little time capsule. Of yeah. Movie. Yeah. All the Transformers movies. Yeah. I, I don't think I'll ever feel. Well, I may never feel again, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'll ever feel the, the, uh, I don't, I don't know what word to use, but Are you going I'll never, you're going? I'm never going to feel the way hearing what I've done. Oh yeah. At the end of Transformers 2007 made me feel. I think a lot I don't of know that I'll ever right. feel the way that New Divide made me feel in Transformers 2. Like Yeah. I don't know, man. I, I remember black skies, the lightning all around me. <laughs> oh, we grew up at such an interesting time. We grew up in the best of times. Can we bring back fun music and like hope? Absolutely nothing bad happened in 2007. Or 2008. Or 2012. Or any of, really any of the years. Remember between... Occupy Wall Street? Remember Coney 2012? Oh, yeah! That came up on, on uh, the my oh. YouTube, my, my personal stream the other night, Coney 2012. I still think Internet Historian's video about that is one of the best videos on the internet. Have you seen it? I haven't. It's so good. I'll have to take a look. It's so good. <laughs> it's, I, I, it's how I found his channel, actually. Uh-huh. Because I remember that happening freshman year of high school. Right. And everybody was like just throwing stickers everywhere. It was like, oh, yeah, we, we're going to make such a big difference. And then a week later, I didn't Also, wasn't the whole Tony thing, like, didn't actually happen in 2005. And then there was some weird scam about it in 2012. And that's how it got spread around. So he We should do really a video well. on that, actually. We should do our own. We could. His video yeah. is so good, though. That's fine. Like, <laughs> gives me a challenge. Fair enough. But listen, when I when I when we do a video somebody else has covered, I do set out to do a better version of it. Fair. But that's not me being like, haha, yours is trash. It's me being like, all right, I gotta be better than you. Fair. If yours is the most popular, I gotta be better. You know what I'm surprised we haven't done yet? What? Dragons. True. That would be a good one. That'd be fun. Yeah, we Just can definitely Considering do that. so many cultures have I mean, it's probably going to take a lot of research time, but like... It's going to be a lot of research. Yeah. That's why we haven't done a Giants video either. Like a video mm. just on Giants. Yeah. Uh, also, whoever's in the chat saying Jets, 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 uh, listen. Yeah. You're on dangerous ground, Frank. Listen, I'm going to tell Zach Wilson where your mom lives. That's what I have to say to you. <laughs> Isn't it so weird that Taylor <laughs> put Travis on the map? <laughs> <laughs> I earned this. Start to go by the Good Start to go attack. Start to go attack. <laughs> Come here, Arch. There we go. Good boy. Incredible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're on thin ice, bud. <laughs> what was that little sound you just made? Like, he's just sitting here. Oh, uh, yeah, so... So, out of all the four movies... Yeah. Rank them worst to best. Uh, the first one's definitely the worst. Really? Um, it's hard, because I would say that cinematically, mm -hmm. like, from a narrative perspective, a an acting perspective, I, I think the fourth is the best movie. Okay. I think I enjoyed the third the most mm -hmm. because it felt like it took itself the right amount of seriousness. I also really enjoyed the characters in the third one. Yeah. Um, it felt like they actually bothered to put some effort into backstories. Like, Chris has a backstory with Rick. Um, you know, there's... there's uh, One of the characters is pregnant. Like, there's more mm -hmm. layers to the third one, yeah. but without it feeling like it's trying to be a good movie. And then four... They're trying to be a good movie, but the problem is, it's just, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> I will say, the one thing I found interesting, even though I wasn't sure how I felt about the execution, the the fact that it was Jason's mother in the first one. Yeah. And the fact that, that it was, was kind of... like a major plot twist for people. Oh, yeah. Like, the fact that it was kind of a reverse, like, Bates Motel yeah. thing, or uh, the Psycho, I guess. I can't right. remember what his name was. Jason was it like Jake Jason Bates? in which one in Bates? Psycho Psycho I don't know the original like Alfred Hitchcock one I, yeah, I can't remember, remember. um but yeah it's the, also hilarious that that was a horror movie at some point I know uh but yeah the fact that it was kind of like a reverse of that I thought yeah. was really interesting and fun um but yeah the fact that she just kind of was like looking off into the distance and like yeah whatever. I also did like the twist of the second one mm -hmm. of the girl putting on the sweater 
and yeah. pretending to be like, I just thought it was really that's, clever. So that's the thing about it is, and this is why I think the 2009 one is a good movie. Mm-hmm. For the 2009 one, they didn't go, all right, let's, let's improve the first one and then do three more. They went, let's take what worked yeah. about one, two, three, and four and compress it into one movie. Yeah. And I think that's why 2009 feels like a movie, not a, a campy horror movie from the 80s it yeah. feels like a horror movie um also helps that they brought in kind of a, a heavyweight for the genre to be in the movie uh with jared padalecki being in there he was still pretty early in that though. that was four years into supernatural though that's fair yeah 2000 the, the show had been airing since 2000 late 2004 i want to say 2005 I, I think the first episodes are 2004 if you look up really i thought it was the 05 fall season i think it was the 04 fall season but you can check yeah. Um, if you want important. to. I just feel like I remember when it was like on TV, it would say 2004. Got it. In the early, like the first like five episodes of the first season. You know what I just saw what? the other day when I was at Acme? What? You know the Supernatural mm. Impala? Yeah. Okay. You know how they have those little racks of toy cars at like Acme and CVS and stuff like that? Mm-hmm. They had it there, but it was in beige. Ugh. It wasn't, it specifically wasn't marketed as the Supernatural Impala, but it's a 67 four-door Impala, but beige. Why? I don't know why people thought beige cars were a good idea ever. Yeah, but also, like, what would be the purpose, like, why that show made that car famous? Yeah. What other reason than the tie into that show would you want to put that car in a show? It just confused me because of what we were talking about, you know. Would not know. I, I could not tell you. Norman Bates, thank you. Norman Bates. Yep. That sounds about right. Norman Keys. Not the same person. <laughs> um he's far less frightening. Is he? Yeah. Okay. He is a capable man. Capable, yes, but I think meek is the word for Norman. <laughs> you said in, it in not the, me. In the, in the actual defined sense of being capable, but choosing to remain he is, non, non-violent. He's the epitome of better to be a warrior in a field yeah, than exactly. a farmer in war. Yeah, precisely. That's <laughs> um, That was not meant as a disrespectful no. comment at all. He designed yeah. the logo in the corners of the screen. He did design so. the logo, yes. Uh, so the But yeah, what I wanted to be saying here uh, was, was not that. I was trying to make a point about the way that filmmaking impacted Jason. Most of the mm. monsters we've talked about when, like, most of the horror movie monsters you see today yeah. are pre, pre-established in our world. In some, some canon of belief yeah, with rare exceptions yeah. like michael myers yeah but that's what so that's the thing yeah when you do create a new monster which is what they did with jason Voorhees, it's you're kind of bound by the film by the constraints of the filmmaking process is yeah uh so like for example i asked uh when we were at that film festival um at the colonial yeah what the question i asked was you know when you're in the process of writing and going to production, how do you keep yourself, you know, grounded to your budget? And how does that impact decisions? And they basically said it does impact decisions and you try not to think about it yeah. while you're writing and then you pare down afterwards, um, which I thought was great advice. In this case, basically every single piece of Jason Voorhees' identity was determined by the filmmaking process Mm -hmm. and not by any sort of folklore which is why when you finally get to jason goes to hell the final friday uh, (laughs) which is a great title great title the final friday is immaculate especially since uh part four was the final chapter yeah um (laughs) it's just it's going that extra mile it's like there's not look up what part seven was too okay hang on look up what part seven or I'm uh, honestly, if you just look up Friday the Thirteenth series, it'll the new blood. The new blood. What's part eight? Part eight. <laughs> Jason they takes Manhattan, Manhattan. <laughs> which is great. It's just a great curveball. <laughs> I know it's just. It's and then so what was ridiculous. nine? Jason goes to hell the final Friday. But here's the thing: it's not the final Friday no, because, because we got there's Jason three more Fridays. X, Jason ten. 
<laughs> we had Jason X. We get Freddy versus Jason. Is we get Freddy versus Jason versus Ash in the comic book. Is Freddy based on anything, or is that also... Freddy Krueger... Well, I don't know yet. I haven't done the... Fair. So my... Freddy Krueger, actually, if we were to do, would be a lot easier, because we can just dive right back into all the same nightmare stuff, um, as we talked about with the rake. Mm. So that would be... So that's what I might do for that video, is comparing Freddy Krueger and the rake. Fair. Because they both are associated with sleep paralysis that makes sense uh, i will say the biggest thing about halloween is that the the theme did get to me in middle school 100 percent. well i can't remember oh the one that sounds a lot like uh the call of duty zombies yes yeah yes 100 percent. yeah it definitely got to me as a kid yeah that's understandable you didn't like it freaked you out a little bit yeah <laughs> I gotta stop, well, I don't have to worry about it now because mm. I'm 25, but, like, as a young kid, I yeah. had a horrible habit of watching relative, like, somewhat scary movies, mm -hmm. at least for the age, either when it was dark, late at night, or in thunderstorms. I was convinced that the aliens from Alien were gonna come get us when I was seven. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I was the same. I, I had to sleep with blackout shades as a kid mm -hmm. because, I, you know, living up on the mountain, I could see the, the radio tower mm -hmm. blinking red light at night. <laughs> And at five or six years old, I was like, it's aliens, they're going to kill me. And my parents were like, no, they're not. And I'm like, I know they're not, but it's scary and I don't <laughs> want to see it. <laughs> and they were like, that's okay, we'll get you different shades. Strange, but okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but there's there's a few like distinct things about Jason with the movie. So the fact that Jason is even alive is not from the first movie. Yeah. In the first movie, Jason is 100% dead. Well, at the end, they do say, but he's, so he's still out there. Well, but that's the thing. When the movie was originally shot, mm -hmm. I, that was supposed to be implying that she had gone insane. Got it. Okay. Was the idea there. Was like, that didn't happen. Got it. That is confirmed to be a dream. Got it. Okay. Um, That is, you know, something that, that the, she the, dreamed. The grab bit or the end the of it as well? The grab bit. Okay. The part at the end of the first movie where she's like, then he's still out there, that, that actually happens. Yeah, yeah. So Jason... When we get to the end of the first movie, and we have to introduce the second movie, which takes place five years later, yeah. Jason is dead, which means they have to bring Jason back without Solomon Jason ever having been brought back. Yeah. So they have to make it so Jason never died, because the thing is, Jason would have died as a child. So, I don't think that Sean Cunningham even knows what the word revenant means because he was making this movie as a, a direct way to make money off of halloween mm -hmm. um i may be wrong he may actually be into horror stuff but that is certainly not the route that was taken here anyway point is jason can't be a revenant because a revenant is uh a term that has been synonymous with ghost by the way in the past but a revenant is somebody who has risen from the dead and that is an umbrella term. So that would include vampires, that would include zombies, that would include... Well, not actually traditional zombies, it would not include. But it would include vampires, it would include uh, any uh, like more European, like rises from the dead kind of zombie. Mm -hmm. uh, any kind of undead is usually a revenant. Frogger would be one. Um, and it's usually that it comes back and it has a purpose. Like it's, it's back for a reason. Uh, sometimes that reason is revenge. Sometimes that reason is to right its wrongs. Um, revenants vary, obviously, between, you know, you've got rather intelligent ones like vampires, and then you've got basic, basic zombies. Jason almost seems to be a revenant, except that he can't be because he would have died as a child and then grown after death. So revenant is out. Got it. That would have been the simple one. Jason's just undead. That's why he isn't harmed by most things. That's why he doesn't think. It's why he doesn't speak. He's just undead. Yeah. He's not. So they had to keep making choices based around that while creating his character. Because they had to make it so he wasn't simple to kill. Because Jason at his core in part two, not that scary if you're not a moron. Yeah. Basically but... everybody that dies in part two ran off alone. Yeah. Or wasn't paying attention. I was going to say, but it is a horror film. So Yeah, so exactly. So you know, Unfortunately, some of that's implied. It is. Also, you know, if you're ever in a horror movie, don't do drugs or 
kith because if we ever do a horror movie they're gonna be really smart and it's still not gonna work exactly that's what's gonna be fun about our yeah. and we went camping they are smart exactly they don't split up into yeah. individuals they take a gun like and they still get got correct so that's that's scary yeah, that's really, scary really really confident about this camping trip Oh, yeah, I'm making Amanda go camping with me on Halloween. Nice. Not on Halloween, it's on the 28th. Close enough. But she's 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 scared. She thinks the ghosties are going to be about. I'm not... I'm a little concerned, mostly because we don't have to. <laughs> okay, she's more concerned about peeing in the woods. Uh, you'll be fine. No, yeah. I won't. You guys get to stay in my bones. I mean, not with that attitude. <laughs> <laughs> you got rock salt, you're good. Yeah, exactly. Um, there will be men with guns. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's gonna get you. <laughs> Especially not Jason Voorhees. Well, as long as you're not at what is it? Camp, Camp Crystal Lake. Yeah, Jason's very territorial. He is. That is the thing too. That like, I'm not even in the '80s. I wouldn't be scared of Jason Voorhees because as long as I don't go to the worst state in the world, as long as I do not enter into a fetid hive of scum villainy and bad accents and horrible drivers and the home of the new york jets and the new york giants we're not gonna talk about it and we're not gonna talk about it and a place where if like you know if, if you feel like maybe you have the right to self-defense they arrest you or they're like hey you don't get to pump your own gas because you're That's a little baby bitch one. yeah like listen listen phil murphy i can pump my own gas here in Pennsylvania, we're adults. So is like every other state in the union. Yeah, back when Oregon was still weird, you guys had an excuse. It's just you now. Is it just? Like, it's just them. Is it just the insurance? I I, I don't know if it's insurance. Everyone or, else pays it. Or it, it it creates jobs, maybe. I but oh uh, like, yeah, probably. You know, I'm I'm frustrated enough when I am asked to tip at like a takeout thing. Yeah, I always do because I feel you, bad. You you ask me to. You, you asked me to tip for gas I would have pumped myself if you didn't force me to not? No. That's why Jason went on a killing spree. He was stuck in New Jersey. That's it. I would too. He's just full of anger because nobody lets him leave New Jersey. He could try. Be under, it, it, he does go to Manhattan. That's right, he does. For vengeance. For vengeance. Against Rudy Giuliani. <laughs> What did Rudy Giuliani do to Jason? You don't want to know. I kind of want. I kind of want a skit now where Rudy Giuliani is the one prosecuting Jason Voorhees. Oh yeah, hundred percent. I'm all in on that. <laughs> and you know it'd be hilarious. It would be because it wouldn't be a narrative story. It would be a documentary. Uh huh. He did that. Yep. Rudy Giuliani prosecuted Jason Voorhees in the '90s. All right. You know what? From now on, it's it's canon. We're sticking to it. <laughs> From now on, it is canon. Jason Voorhees was prosecuted by Rudy Giuliani. In the 90s. In the 90s. Was Rudy Giuliani even a prosecutor in the 90s? He was mayor in the 90s. When was he a prosecutor? Right before then, I think. When was Rudy? <laughs> oh, Kellen did just Giuliani. Out you. Hey, what? He said, Mattis just said Ohio is greater than New Jersey. That is fair. Yeah. <laughs> He was uh, Southern District of New York from 83 to 89. Okay, so it has to be in 89. He made an exception. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, God, I love it. Rudy Giuliani prosecuted Jason Voorhees. I'm going to put that. I, I, we should make a graphic out of that. Yes. Like an infographic. Yes. Like everything you need to know about the unfair prosecution of Jason Voorhees. In the 90s. In the 90s. I want somebody to make a jingle in the tune of the BoJack Horseman ending credits of back in the 90s, I had a very famous TV show, but change it to back in the 90s, Rudy, Giuli Rudy Giuliani prosecuted Jason Voorhees in Manhattan. <laughs> Freddy yeah. versus Jason versus Rudy? <laughs> <laughs> Who's the judge? Michael Myers. I feel like he'd be the bailiff. That's fair. Obama. Yes. <laughs> Michelle Obama. Michelle Obama? I support this. You know that... The, the twist is that she, break the she was Michael Myers all along. Yes. Yeah. 
Michelle Myers. Feed your kids healthy food. <laughs> Or I will murder you. Michelle Obama was the real villain. Oh my god, you weren't subjected to that. What? The Healthy Hunger Free Kids Act or whatever it was called. Oh yeah. What oh my about? god. It was the it was Michelle Obama's brainchild. Yeah, I know, but like what like what was your food? Listen, her husband bombed hospitals in Yemen, but this was the worst thing the Obama administration <laughs> ever did. Um <laughs> like Good lord, the pizza was made of cardboard. The chicken patties, listen, we never thought they were chicken, but it became clear. Like, Fair. Ugh. Like, it, it actually became clear? I, I, it might as well have. <laughs> oh, God. It was like you could have no more than two ounces of meat per meal. What? I was a varsity athlete. What do you mean no more than two ounces? What's wrong with me? So, I'm a carnivore, so, like... It, mm -hmm. <laughs> that doesn't even make sense. All of the student athletes had to bring extra food to school. Yeah, I bet. Or they had to buy extra at lunch. You were allowed to buy more, but the standard meal could only have two ounces of meat. It might, it may have been four, but I really don't think it was. Have we learned a lesson? <laughs> so. Yeah, it was, but the thing was, since you could only have, I think it was two or three ounces of meat per serving, that meant that every single item had no more than, I think it, it might have been like three or four ounces now that I'm thinking about it, but every single item had no more than three or four ounces. Of all the things you could restrict in student lunches, meat makes no sense yep. to me. Oh, it was, it was awful. Um... It was not good. I, I went to... And the thing was, it wasn't like I went to an inner city public school that had no funding. I went to the top-ranked public high school in the country from a very, very wealthy area. Like, we should have had better food. Yeah. Um, you got robbed. Yeah. Literally. Uh, yeah, and I don't. that may have made it sound like I grew up with a ton of money. I didn't. <laughs> Like, we were very, very modest for the area. Growing up in an area does not mean you have all yeah. of the accoutrement of yeah. the area. Uh, I remember uh, I I was watching movies on our, our tube TV in the basement. Um, oh, yeah, I remember that. Some of the days. other kids were watching movies in the uh, the movie theater in their basement. Yep. So we were... Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. I was right little, there with you. A little different, uh, me, and, me and the other kids. I had, I had my little, my VHS... I felt special because my tube TV had the VHS built Same. into it. Mine had a DVD player too. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Mine was, was just. Uh, those were the days. VHS. Those were the days. Oh yeah. But... So much Thomas the Tank Engine. So much Thomas the Tank Engine. You have no idea. Uh, it, of course, of course it would be. Of yep. course it would be Thomas the Tank Engine. Oh yeah. And like, you know, big machines and like. I had I dig dirt. Yeah. I yeah, learned yeah, yeah, later yeah, yeah. that I dig dirt was in fact coal industry propaganda. Oh, I knew it. I, it had to be. It was way too cool to it, not be. It was definitely fossil fuel industry propaganda. Hundred <laughs> percent. Most of the film took place in a literal coal yeah. pit. Uh, one of they so made it look like a sandbox. One of Norman's friends from college. Yeah. Uh, is the opposite of me in almost every possible way, mm -hmm. politically, religiously, everything. But we have had some remarkably similar experiences interesting just in some like really random ways one of which was that we both watched i dig dirt as a child yeah um and had totally opposite reactions to it which was me being like i love trucks and capitalism yeah. and him being like this is coal industry propaganda <laughs> later he, on what, what later was, on obviously i was gonna say what was he for with like a toy bubble cigarette being like <laughs> this is propaganda yeah. <laughs> where is my bottle mama <laughs> Wrench? Yeah. <laughs> I just assume any child who's referring to something as propaganda idolizes the French. This is propaganda. I will not watch. <laughs> Where's that charcuterie? It's like, I smoke this cigarette and put another cigarette into my mouth. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what do you mean, go home to my wife? Why would I do that? I have several mistresses. All of them are ugly. But not as ugly as my wife. <laughs> you went in a very different direction than I was anticipating. Where did you think I was going? <laughs> Anywhere but there. <laughs> Incredible. 
Uh, okay, so if you if you had to pin down Jason, because mm-hmm. you bring up Nephilim in the video. Yeah, that was kind of what I was going into it with, was knowing the general, like, vague nature of Jason. I was like, ah, maybe he's, like, a half-human, half-demon, half-human, half-angel kind of deal? Yeah. He's not. Uh, the official explanation from uh, Jason Goes to Hell is that he's a deadite from Evil Dead. So what are those? Because I've never seen... I still don't totally understand, but from what I what I gathered, it was a type of demonic entity that can possess the living or the dead. Got it. And in this case, it was that Jason did die mm-hmm. when he drowned, but his mother brought him back by summoning right. a demon that uh, took over his body to resurrect him. Um, is the, the general gist of that. I still don't totally understand. The thing is... That plot point was expressed via a single shot including the Necronomicon Ex Mortis from Evil Dead Yes. in Jason's house. It was revealed that that was, in fact, a nod to Jason being a deadite from Evil Dead. Okay, rem- reminder that uh, Jason Goes to Hell came out in 1993. Adam Marcus revealed this, this, uh, this plot point in 2017. I guess he was just. Like, I can say this much. In 2009's installment, absolutely not the case. Oh, no. John Cunningham produced both. What I think happened here is that Sean Cunningham, from what I understand, because I tried to look into it, I was like, has he ever made a statement about this? It doesn't seem like he has. From what I understand, he felt that the series was getting stale. Okay. So he told Adam Marcus, be creative, take it in a new direction. Adam Marcus got little bit uh, too too creative and was like i really like evil dead i'll just make him a dead uh that's not said to be canon until 2017 publicly in 2009's edition jason did not die Mm. he was alive was it was that officially a reboot though so that's the thing. It was it was produced by Sean Cunningham. It mm-hmm. was intended to reboot the series. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a remake, not a reboot. So they were starting the series over, not like introducing the story in a new place. Got it. Okay. Um, it, I just the two terms can be, yeah, confusing. But yeah, so it was it was a full remake. They were starting the story over, with Jason still as the villain, but in this case. They, they didn't do the first movie. So Friday the 13th, 2009 is really more a remake. Not It's not even a remake at all. But if it were... That's why I went with reboot. Because it was essentially yeah, restarting the whole thing. Yeah, movie. I guess. Good point. Yeah. So, yeah, it's... In my understanding of reboot was that that was more of a term for, like, when you... Like, if you were to start How I Met Your Mother up again. That that would be rebooting it. If you, like, picked it up somewhere in the time that it, it left know. off. From my understanding, that would be more of like a, like kind of what Dexter did. I don't know what the term for that would be because if it's the same, I thought case, it was reboot. I don't know. You got me confused. <laughs> anyway, my point was, the 2009 one does not include the first movie except as a single flashback to okay. Alice killing Pamela. Which, by the way, mm-hmm. I think it does technically pass the Bechdel test. Does it? I think so. We love that. Because Alice and Pamela are talking about a man, but they're talking about her son who drowned 20 years ago. I don't know if that counts. I think the Bechdel test is somewhat other. I don't know if that counts. I don't know. Well, either way, very progressive to have a woman killing people instead of a man. Yes. Um, you know, good job. <laughs> Good on you. Yeah, what was I saying? Oh, uh, well, we were initially talking about reboots, and uh, from what I can see, reboot is a term used to describe a new start to an established fictional universe, work, or series, disregarding continuity to oh, okay. so it character is a plot lines and backstory from the beginning. All right, yeah. So, but yeah, so what they did was they have a flashback to show Pamela dying, and Ken is very adamant that that does not count for passing the Bechdel test. <laughs> uh, so. God, I'm, I keep getting off track here. Uh, yeah, they show the they show the 
the end of the first movie has a flashback basically to give you jason's villain origin story mm -hmm. um this does legitimately start his villain arc uh <laughs> from there they take all the best parts of the previous movies yeah and roll them into one and what you see with jason is that jason did not die when he drowned he survived somehow seems to have been survived out in the wilderness it doesn't say how old he was when he drowned in the in the remake so it could be that he was slightly older yes um it definitely heavily implies that he is disabled yeah like men mentally disabled assuming whether or not it was before or after he probably suffered some serious brain damage from lack of oxygen from the drowning. exactly uh i forget if they show how deformed he is but i remember it being not quite as stark okay so the deformity could be could be either way in that one I, I can't remember off the top of my head point is that jason is much more realistic that is a human being who survives because of physical abnormalities it seems to me likely that whatever yeah based on the other physical things he's probably it's probably genetic whatever he has mm -hmm. he seems to have some form of gigantism he has I don't think he gets anything chopped straight through in the remake, but um, he's he's definitely stronger. He seems to have, you know, a much higher resistance to trauma, but it seems to be because of legitimate physical abnormalities mm. rather than any sort of magical curse. Yeah. Um, and what you get is a, it, a much more violent, but also much more toned down movie, interestingly enough. Um, but you know, with all of that out of the way, it is time to go to super chats. It is indeed. So we'll go way back to an hour ago at the beginning of the show to start off with Alex Hoffman, who's been for a member for a month. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, saying hello. How are you guys? I am neat. It's fine. Tired. Yeah. The Eagles lost. Yeah. So we're a little sad, but overall decent. Yeah. It's, uh. I should be used to it by now. Yeah, right. But I was exhausted three hours ago. I wasn't sure if I'd be able to like do this. Yeah. Thank God I ate some food. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh, we made soups. We did make very good soup. Soup is great. We made very good butternut squash soup. I just found out that Campbell's does condensed soup. Yeah. yeah. All the soups I ever got were like I guess Progresso or like something oh, yeah. else, and they were the regular. But yeah. Yeah. I have heartburn. Oof, that's unfortunate. Mm. I would love some Tums if you don't mind. Harry Diggins for four ninety nine pounds says, had to work a warehouse job over the summer. Your guys' podcast helped me get oh, through it. Well, First you. live I've caught. Here's a little thank you from England. Thank you. Thank you very much, Harry. Uh, be curious to know what, what, what you were doing and uh, how it went. Uh, Richard Henderson for nineteen ninety nine. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, Jason Voorhees truly represents the autistic community. By being nonverbal and getting rid of all problems who disturb him from being. <laughs> Am I allowed to laugh at that? I don't know. You're autistic, you are. I'm not confirmed to be. Where I, well, I can see Aiden where you're coming King. from. <laughs> yeah, I did score higher than you did, didn't yeah. I? I was borderline. Yeah, that's fine. Explains a lot of things for me as a child, but we'll let that we'll let that be for now. I'm still never gonna let you live down the time that I was coming over to do something and you were like a quarter mile away watching a train. <laughs> okay, yeah, you know what? I just I just needed to see one that day. <laughs> In the mood to to check. I yeah. Every time I go on a run and I hear one coming, I do like speed to go see it go by because I just like big machines. <laughs> I might need to retake the test. <laughs> Moving on. Pumpkin Bear 7 for $5 says, I made it back home safely. Trip was 9 out of 10. The only reason is that I didn't get to see Longwood Gardens and the food slash uh, everything else was amazing. Longwood Gardens is cursed. Don't go there. Why? Because the dude escaped? No. no, that was funny. <laughs> I'm not allowed to put the Longwood Gardens. Um, no, every time I have brought a girlfriend to Longwood Gardens, they have broken up with me within two weeks. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're never going there. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> like i didn't realize that taking somebody to longwood gardens was that offensive if you ever take me to longwood gardens i will know you want to get rid of me <laughs> didn't caitlin's soon-to-be husband propose to her there though i think so <laughs> we still haven't met him yeah i don't know <laughs> 
Uh, I don't even know if he's real. We're just going to this wedding assuming he is. It could be the biggest prank of all time. It would be hilarious. It'd be amazing. Yeah. We're going to find out. expensive. That's like a, that's like like a Winston level prank. That's a Mr. Beast prank right there. It'd be pretty great. <laughs> I'll explain later. <laughs> anyway. Uh, the biggest YouTuber in the world. Joe Turner does a lot of videos that are like pranks or challenges or whatever. Basically does that's Squid Games why, IRL. That's why I don't know who Yeah, that's is. fair. That's fair. Fair. Joe Turzen for four dollars and ninety nine cents says, "Recorded my first YouTube video. You guys make presenting look so easy. Thanks for entertaining all of us, Freddie or Jason. The reason we make it look so easy is because we're not good at it. <laughs> we've been doing this a while too. Like, yeah. It's just, I mean, go go back and watch our early videos. Oh yeah, that was brutal. Like, it's rough. <laughs> but that you you have taken the hardest step, which is starting. Yeah, just keep so, doing it. Just keep keep at it." uh what else do we have we have jared wilk uh wilkins for five dollars saying if you ever get the chance i think five nights at freddy's would make an interesting video that'd be definitely a good deep dive it's just that that's like wendigoon's one of his isn't that one of wendigoon's big ones i think so i think he wants to do it, it yeah or has he already done it i think he already did it oh I really thought. um i think that was one of the ones that he either had done or that he was like doing so i'm yeah. not i'm not gonna step on those toes like i said i have no problem doing stuff other people have done um but if somebody expresses to me that like oh i'm gonna be doing a video on this i'm not gonna go out of my way to do it before they do no. unless i was already planning to yeah in which case it's like ah me too want to share notes <laughs> like yeah exactly i think that's a funny thing about this community that i i just noticed from the comments i think a lot of people get the impression that there's any sort of rivalry between no like us and Mr. Ballin and Wendigoon and Swamp Weller and Roanoke and Missing Enigma. Like, they think that for some reason we like. Like, I'll get people who comment on our videos and they're like, you know, oh my God, so and so did it so much better. And it's like. Good for them. Like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, cool, I guess. Like, if there's any rivalry, we haven't noticed it. Yeah, people accused us of uh, stealing. Uh, ste uh, what was it? Uh, Missing Enigma did a Stephen Kabaki video mm. like the same day or we did or the day before. And people were like, wow, you like ripped him off. Like, <laughs> we're like, no, we didn't. <laughs> we didn't know. Yeah. We shot ours six days before that came out. But no, in my experience, everybody's been super willing to appear on each other's shows and compare yeah. notes and everything. It's a really good community. No, it's been great. Why well, as a member for 19 months, rocking it, dude. Love to see it. You have been around since the beginning. Love that. Uh, at some point, you guys got to do some analysis of John Carpenter's The Thing, but for November, you got to do V for Vendetta. Remember, remember, that's Ooh, not a bad idea. It's not a bad idea. It's a great movie. It's on the it's on the short list for a rewatch. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, good call. Maybe not on the 5th of November, but we could get it into November for sure. Yeah. And there will be an easy history connection there. Oh, yeah, 100%. Um, I, yeah, we can do, like, the true story behind Beer for Vendetta. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it'd be fun. Uh, Professor10193 for $5 says, The YouTube channel War Stories released a video on cannibal giants in the Solomon Islands. Also mentions Nephilim in the video. Interesting. Could be, I'll take a look at it. Yeah, it could be worth looking at. Miss Mori for $5 says, At first I thought the euphemisms were because of YouTube <laughs> censorship. Then I realized that it was for hilarity. Loved it even more. Yeah, yeah it was, it was two earlier. birds, one stone. Yep. Uh, uh only a stone in the hand is worth two in the bird. No, you tried that earlier. It no, <laughs> it's wrong both times. Yeah, a bush in the stone is worth two in the bird. Stop. Bird in the stone is worth two in the. A stone bird, bird is stoned. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you? No. <laughs> Tired. Fair. Uh, Kellen, the official data for four ninety nine says, "Hey boys, was out of town for a couple weeks, but I'm back. So here's money. Thank you. I wish everybody gave me money when they came back work. to town. Wouldn't that be amazing? Yeah, love that. Thank you, sir. <laughs> uh, Blocky Ninja for nine ninety nine says, "Hey guys, great work on this week's video. I'm considering a documentary film slash series on folklore and urban legends in my home state of Idaho. Ooh. Any general advice, particularly with research? If it's research advice, you've got your man. Yeah. So my advice with research is the exact opposite of what all of your high school teachers told you. Start with Wikipedia. Mm. Start with Wikipedia, because here's the thing: Wikipedia's analysis is probably like eighty percent solid." If you go and you read the sources, you're going to get good info. 
So I usually, if it's a topic I'm not already very familiar with, like if I were to be doing the Templars or Owen Glendower or uh, the Crusades or something like that, I would I would know where to look. Yeah. Um, off the bat, but for stuff that I don't already have a, a background knowledge in, I start with Wikipedia or blog posts or whatever, and I will go read through those and I'll see what those say. And then it's basically I make a list of stuff and I'm like, all right, I need to fact check this. All right, well it links to this source, so I'm gonna go read that source and then I read that source. If that source agrees then cool you know i don't really need to go any further if that source disagrees well why why does that source differ from what wikipedia says is it because the source has been abrogated or is it because the the source at wikipedia archie <laughs> or because uh wikipedia archie come here come on <laughs> Is it because the source was wrong? Is it because new research has been done? Or was it because Wikipedia was wrong? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I usually start with Wikipedia and then I go from there, checking through the sources. Uh, oftentimes you can find bibliographies as well. That's kind of the old fashioned way of doing it. But that is basically what I'm doing with Wikipedia because it has the bibliography at the bottom. Fair. And then those, you know, what when you go and you look at an academic source like on JSTOR or something, which is what you're going to want to do, you're going to need a JSTOR subscription or if you are a, a university student you can likely access it through there. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, with JSTOR, uh, what you'll do is you'll then find, alright, well I'm reading this document and this references this and this and this. You know, and then you can usually look up that and you can look up reviews of it, whatever you read, and it's you know, it's a process. But yeah. I, I use the academic process for doing history that's that is why our channel is is different in my opinion from a lot of other ones that are similar in in theme hmm. is they are done by people who are not historians so they're not done like like history projects whereas everything we do is done like a history research paper um so if that's your cup of tea then this is a good channel if it's not then i get it yeah uh cool i just wanted to add in the cat said a bush in the hand is worth two birds <laughs> yes just to add that in. Uh, a hand in the bird is worth bush stone? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no hands in birds. No hands in birds. Uh, Red Rose 509 for $5.69. Love it. Uh, my mom would always tell me to walk it off like Jason, then would follow it up with man up, Mary. <laughs> Love you guys. Also looking for that calendar, Winky it's, Face. We, are, we decided we're shooting it in November. Yep, early November. We're going to shoot it so that way we can get it out before the new year. So that way you can have yeah. a proper 2024 yeah, calendar. I, I say we do it right before my birthday. That way we have like a week where we can... Just get absolutely shredded. Get absolutely shredded before my birthday and after Halloween. Yes. Smart. Yeah. yeah. So we got my Halloween birthday coming up, so... Nice. Birth, my birthday ween Carlos Consorcio Castellano Perez for $7.60. Love it. Said, have you heard of Fanboy Jesus? During the Dark Ages before the Virgin Mary was the female symbol in Christianity, he was shown more feminine. Interesting. So it's not a meme. It's just that the, the depictions have changed over time, supposedly. I'm Allegedly. gonna have to look into that. Because that doesn't sound right to me. <laughs> For a number of reasons. <laughs> None of them are the reasons you'd immediately think. All of them are based on my actual, like, experience looking at artistic depictions. <laughs> um, Fair. Uh, I'm curious about that one. Oh, buddy. Bleach Killer 419 for $5 says, Sorry, I wasn't trying to disrespect your Friday the 13th vid, just YouTube. You're absolutely hilarious. Oh, no, you're fine. I didn't even see what you're talking about. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Uh, Kelly, the official data for 499 says Freddy Krueger is an overactive sleep paralysis demon, and I will die on that hill. That was kind of what we were going into it with the assumption of for whenever yeah. we do get to that one. I mean, yeah, fair. Ryan Krellick for five dollars says he makes sense to me. Oh, Jason, I think so. Probably. Oh, ah, yeah. well, you know, I'm happy for you. Yeah, you're better than we. Uh, Grant Brazil, Brazil. We're gonna go with that. For $9.99 says, I am once again requesting a video of commonly believed or accepted historical documents slash ideas or main theories that are proven false. Also, I request an awoo. Oh, I'll see if he's willing to do it. Uh, video of commonly believed or accepted historical documents, ideas, or main theories that are proven false. I could probably do a video on like three. 
There aren't as many as you would think. Um, there's more that were. There's a lot of there's a lot of minor ones. It. Yeah, there's a lot of minor ones, but there's not a ton there for that I could do like a huge video on them. Yeah, but yeah, it's things like uh, and especially if it's stuff that's in dispute, like the Shroud of Turin. That's easy. Also, I think anytime somebody has a name that we can't pronounce, we should just do it in the most wrong way possible. Like, Briazali. Watch that be right. Briazali? Yeah. Yeah, probably not, though. Richard Henderson for 989 says... No, that is clearly Richard Henderson. True. Yeah. A.A. Ron. A.A. Ron. D-Nice. Well, now we're just completely off base. Yes. Uh, he's just mad that us in Jersey don't have to pump our own gas like a peasant. No, no. You don't understand. You are, you know, Plato's allegory of the cave. That's you. You're in the cave. <laughs> it doesn't have to be this way. There's a better world on the outside. Behold, you can pump man. your own gas. You can do it. I believe in you, New Jersey. <laughs> it's not as scary as you think. It's okay. Moving on. Miss Mori for $2 says they tried to change the gas pump. People got rage. Shocker. Imagine, Grow up. imagine people not like or imagine <laughs> people liking change it couldn't be me you guys you guys need us to hold your hand does the entire state of new jersey need us to hold their hand when they cross the street your little baby i'm gonna let you take that one what what no you're good <laughs> uh we already did that one from kellen so ryan whitcup for five dollars and 43 cents says what's your favorite books on the bible to reread also, love the format and the euphemisms were killing me. Woo! No pun intended, uh, but pun kept. Great job, boys. Thank you, sir. Uh, I do love Daniel. <laughs> Daniel's a lot of fun. Fair. Uh, especially Daniel 5. <laughs> but, I, haven't, yeah. I haven't read a ton of it, but I always enjoy Job. Yeah, I like I like Daniel. Job's a good one. It's heavy. Yeah. Lots of philosophy. Um, Probably why I like it. Yeah. Uh, Chronicles is, is a, a fairly easy read. Um, this is nice uh yeah i don't uh, i don't know where else to go with that fair enough um pumpkin bear seven for sam uh samuel one for samuel which one was that again um that's with uh david samuel. david and goliath oh yeah yeah <laughs> that's a fun one uh because it's all of the javelins oh yeah no that's incredible like that alone should be a movie just because it's so ridiculous oh, I yeah agree. amazing uh pumpkin bear seven for two dollars says got milk campaign yeah I think referring back to the cafeteria stuff yeah. from childhood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 8 bit Sardo for $5.56. Love it. For the Joseph Smith joke from last week's podcast, <laughs> as both a Mormon and his brother's <laughs> descendant, that was hilarious. Thank you. We've gotten the Mormon pass. Love it. <laughs> there it is. Uh, I don't think you get a pass because that's what they call themselves. What? Mormons. Remember in the last video, there was the whole issue of mm -hmm. the word Mormon now yeah. being like a slur. Yeah. Which I don't understand. Yeah. Because everyone I've ever met from Utah who is or was Mormon at one point. Yeah. Just says, oh yeah, we're Mormon. Oh yeah. Confusing. Anyway, Norberto Rodriguez Jr. for $2 says, Jason is a revenant. Part six makes him one. Uh... It's possible we were covering... The, you may be right. You may be right about what part six makes him. It's it's confusing because they don't seem to be sure what he was either. Yeah, but then part nine calls him a deadite. So are we yeah, going exactly. chronological superiority or? Yeah, it's just. Well, oh, they make an Ash versus Jason crossover. They have a comic that's Freddy versus Jason versus Ash, I think. Ash from Evil Dead. Okay. I was going to say, like, what Pokemon was he using? <laughs> What what Pokemon is the best one to fight Jason Voorhees with? Great question. Matchup. <laughs> you would know better than I. Uh, Aquafan for four ninety nine said, "Would y'all be willing to do content like this about Daikaiju Godzilla?" Oh, those Kamara. are like the uh, yeah the things from Pacific Rim. Uh, I'd be super into that. I I can look at it. Could be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. There's there's a lot of stuff on the list that is kind of in limbo because it's like, ah, we would definitely do this, but we're still at the point where we have to cater to the algorithm. Once we're like Wendigoon, we will do a lot more videos on broader topics. Yeah, just like whatever. But right want. now, you know, we are we're at some of our lowest view numbers in in months. Yeah. So we're not really sure why. 
Uh, some of the videos have done really well. Some of them have not. Yep. Um, Oregon Trail video about uh, Donner Party, doing great. Gatlov Pass did great. Uh, Cite Ka did not do great. Um, Friday the 13th is, eh, is doing okay. Could could be better. Yep. So. Yeah, not totally sure. Trying to figure it out. We just want to know what you guys want to see yeah. and what, what everyone who watches us wants yeah. to see. The so. problem is the, the people who watch us like everything we put out. It's what YouTube, it's the, the people who don't already watch us who don't click on it. Yeah. So. Yeah. One day, once once as many people as watch the videos now are, like, consistent, like, once our, our core group is not those 30,000 first people that watch, but the first 100,000 people then we can start doing more fun stuff. Yeah. But we've got to kind of, we, we got to play to the algorithm. So you guys are going to get some more Missing 401 soon. If I can find a case, somebody better go missing very soon. Um, I'm kidding, obviously. That like is never something I want. I like how much you looked at me like that. <laughs> Leave. <laughs> okay. No, I mean, worst case scenario, we can do some satellite things that are vaguely 411 related, but maybe not necessarily yeah. like directly on the profile. Yeah, there's a few missing 411 cases that I was looking at, uh, and a few non missing 411, but weird cases yeah. as well. I think dragons is something to good, do good at some point down the line. Yeah, we gotta do, gotta do Nessie. Oh yeah, we've been holding out on her. Oh yeah, it's gotta happen. Maybe I'm no sorry, gonna... Nessie. <laughs> Uh, Fluffy Nupkin for two dollars says, "Shout out to Will Survives." Not sure who that is, but Will Survives. Will Survives. Is that like, like the ethereal Will Survives persists, or is Will Survives an individual, yeah, or I'm, does Will survive? I'm trying to figure out what that what that one meant. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm not entirely sure. There's a few different avenues we could take. Give us some True. clarification. Thanks. Christian Bennett, hello, sir, for $10, hello. says, Jason has this medical condition, uh, congenital insensitivity to pain and anhydrosis, SIPA, is very rare and extremely dangerous condition. People with SIPA cannot feel pain. Yeah, that was, that. that is, that is an interesting one. I had not considered that. That makes sense. It would explain a lot, because he never reacts to injuries with, like, expressions of pain. It's always just anger. He, he almost looks confused that he can't move that thing. Yeah. More than... How did that not occur to me? SIPA plus brain damage from... Yeah. Drowning? Yeah. We've solved it. We have. You heard it here first. This well, Christian character. That's true, yeah. Christian. <laughs> Give him the credit he deserves because yes. he deserves it. Exactly. Uh, cheese, and... <laughs> cheese and quackers. That's amazing. Uh, for Canadian 699... My boyfriend's mother planned to name him Jason, but then he was born on Friday the 13th. <laughs> Not kidding. True story. Amazing work with the video. Thank you so much. Well, I Not mean, in the great story. Sounds like he should have been named Jason. Yeah, that would have actually been incredible. Uh, Norberto Rodriguez Jr. for $5 back again. Do the evil do the evil dead, please. Want to see your take on the Necron the necron Necrochromon. Necronomicon. There it is. Necronomicon. Sorry, I needed to hear it said. Uh, and it's mythology and film analysis. That one I actually may be able to do sooner rather than later because the idea of like the Necronomicon, which comes from I believe Lovecraft. That sounds right. Um, was was the one who di first did the Necronomicon as, as a as a term for it. But uh, Lovecraft comes up in yeah, this week's video. Yeah, it's all it's all kind of based um based around kind of those grimoires and spell books of the Middle Ages. Mm. So I'll be able to talk about like uh, Maleficus myth. Maleficus Maleficarum. Um, That's a hell of a name. Yeah. Uh, it means the witch's hammer. Uh, <laughs> cool. Yeah. So there's a... I, well, I was kind of thinking about doing it with this one. I think I'll hold off for a little while. And I will do... Uh, like a video on witchcraft. The witch's hammer and the warlock's sickle. Why'd you gotta make him communist? It's our magic. It's our magic. <laughs> Not black magic red magic <laughs> uh star j for five dollars we need to get a button that plays the beginning of the soviet national anthem no just 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 because i would love to have that for any time somebody says our it would just, be fun 
it fly also, off like, sail. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing. It does kind of slap. It does kind of slap. Like they they did. It does go hard. They did. A Communism lot of does thing. not go hard, but but their anthem does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, moving on. It's uh, kind of like how the Nazis had their uniforms designed by Hugo Boss. Yeah, Hugo's it, great. It, it's like Hugo Hugo Boss, great designer. Yes. Bad ideas. Yeah. Yeah, it's. Yeah. Hate. Hate the customer, not the merchant. Maybe. Sure. I don't know. Sure. Are we gonna Are we gonna like protest Hugo Boss because he profited off of war crimes? Now? I don't know. Did he do? Uh, he probably did it before people knew. I hope. I can't imagine that he was like, you know, I'm a big fan of what you're doing in Poland. <laughs> Has anyone asked? Well, they can't now. They can't now, but, like, did they? I don't know. It might be worth looking into it. I think so. What was Hugo Boss's stance <laughs> on Germany in the 1930s? <laughs> anyway. Oh, the next uh, one. Star J for $5 says, I don't see a rivalry. The com I see a community of lore. Keep up the good work, guys. Love all of your work. Thank you. Thank you. 8-Bit Sarda for $3.57. Love it, says The Boy. The Boy is currently making noise. He is. Obsidian Blade 87 for $2 says, First time catching you live. Awesome content. Thank, Thank you so much. Uh, Grant Brazil. Uh, we're going to just go with that. That's Breziale. Uh, it's... No, it says Brazil. It's Brazil, like the country. Oh, Northern okay. Irish, apparently. Yeah, there's... Uh, Interesting. It's so... I think someone is really funny. So Grant there's... There is a... I wondered about that. Um, there is a island in Irish folklore known as Bra uh, Brazil. Hi, Brazil. Uh, and it is west. And it only appears once every, I want to say, 20 years. Oh my gosh, like the Dune. But I think you can't... E nobody can get to it even even when it's visible. Interesting. Um, if I remember correctly. There are some beliefs that it may be... Uh, linked to Iceland. Mm. That makes sense. Um so Grand Brazil or possibly or possibly North America. But um yeah, there's 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 stories about it. Um but yeah, it's it's a a a, a likely fictional land, but it may also be North America or Iceland. What's next? One moment. What? What's that? Our Fed. Uh, is, our, our Fed is dropping. Uh, <laughs> it's dropping the Soviet national anthems lyrics. Yes. <laughs> Amazing. Love it. Keep it up. Uh, All dragons are sluts for twenty dollars. Says tossing a javelin or two your way. Also, Ashley Williams is the only good Ash we have ever been given. I have not watched Evil Dead, but I'm sure I will agree with you when I do. Yeah, I haven't seen them either, so. Aquafan for four ninety nine says not Pacific Rim Toho monsters like Godzilla and stuff. New Godzilla film this December first. Yeah. I'm hyped. It's a Toho film, not an American studio. That's, that's what I meant when I said like got like like a Pacific Rim was the idea of the giant monsters. Yeah. Not the. I, I didn't mean that they were necessarily the same universe. Yeah, yeah. To be clear. I did see. Is that different than whatever one Kurt Russell's doing? I think it's a series for like Apple TV or something. So. I'm, I'm going to assume it's different, but, you know, let me know. Uh, Miss Mori for $5 says, Quote of the week, the urge to disappear into the woods and become the local folklore. <laughs> yeah. Love that. That is great. Steve Lyons for three fifty seven, Love it. Uh, odd that Jason is from the Greek word for hero. Uh, yeah, I believe so. Yo uh, Jonas? I'm just going to say I doubt they were thinking about Jason? that when they named Jason Voorhees for the Probably film. Probably not, no. But then again, if they were, then I have not given them enough credit. Were you thinking about that when you called him Jason, the hero, or hero Jason Voorhees? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot I said that in the video. Yeah. Follows hero Jason Voorhees. So we're going to say that that was intentional. <laughs> I forgot that I said that. That was a good one. Oh, yeah. That was a good one. I remember filming that. I had some zingers in this one. You did, absolutely. Well, I remember I was filming that, and you looked at me, you're like, should I? And I was like, you have to. <laughs> it was great. Uh, Grant Brazil. Got it right. For 199 says, looks like I've got a land to reclaim then. Careful. <laughs> that is you that, that is how careful. most European things yeah. happen. <laughs> Somebody going, I've got land to reclaim. That's That's 
Well, actually, no, yeah, that is very Irish, considering there's yeah. a portion of the Northeastern Territory that must be <laughs> Exactly. Um, hey, maybe get the whole island under control before you go island hopping. Yeah, it's fair. Let's build some more houses for people. Sorry, I was not intending to, like, actually do the <laughs> sing-songy vibe as though it was from Donegal, but, like, we'll let yeah. that slide. Yeah. Uh, no. Also, also, land reclamation right now is a whole thing. Let's not get into yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we don't do politics here. Not a politics lodge. No. Uh, Noble Weeaboo for $5 says, Japan has no native legends about dragons. The concept was imported from China. No, Yamada no Orochi isn't a dragon. All right. Interesting that they have no native legends about dragons. Yeah, it's good to know. Mr. What Auto does that imply about the dragons? They are that either, that, transcontinental. That would that, I think that would imply, then, that the mytho... That either implies that the mythology of dragons developed it kind of would have to imply that the mythology of dragons either started yeah wow this is blowing my mind it, okay what i'm trying to say is that would imply that the first people into japan did not have dragon stories which implies either that dragon stories started in the west and were imported east to China later on, mm -hmm. or just or is that dragon done. stories developed after the first people went to Japan. Yeah, both of which are very interesting. We're gonna be doing dragon soon. Aren't we we? got to be doing dragon soon. Love it. Uh, Mister Autobot three ninety for five dollars says the Kurt Russell show for Apple TV is MonsterVerse. I think it takes place after Godzilla twenty four for the most or twenty fourteen for the gotcha. most part. Yeah. I think that's the most recent Godzilla I've seen. Yeah, the other one was fine. Uh, Aquafan for four ninety nine says yes. Toho is Japanese studio. Uh, Legendary Godzilla is an American series with Kong and stuff. Both are yeah. great, but Toho's original studio from nineteen fifty four got it. Okay. Yeah, I'm excited to see a legit Japanese Godzilla. That's not the. Didn't they do the one OG. not too long ago? I don't think a Japanese studio did. I thought they did. I, I think all of its. I'm pretty sure everything that's come out in America has been with American studios that were working with Japanese studios. Got it. But that it was American studios doing it in English for an American and European audience. And yeah, yeah. No, sorry. I, I thought there was one. There was a separate Godzilla for the Japanese audience. Maybe. I thought there might have been. I don't know. But I think, I know for sure that this is the first Japanese that's been, the first one made in Japan by a Japanese studio that's being marketed to Americans in a while. Interesting. I just, like, I, I dug where they were going with the american godzilla one uh i just hated the roar it sounded way too yeah. like artificial for me specifically yeah, but, that's another good point is somebody pointed out that uh that it could be that western and eastern dragons are different and therefore the western dragon tradition may have developed independently from the eastern dragon tradition which is also interesting yeah we're probably going to find some dinosaur that whether or not it's dinosaurs is also not uh that's not even like necessarily a consensus opinion really yeah it's we Why? we aren't totally sure when people started finding fossils because you got to remember how deep down they were fair a lot of fossils started to be found because of dynamite this makes sense, but I also wouldn't be surprised, like, post-landslide yeah. or post-glacial. Well, so the thing is, what what you would need to look for in history, because we don't have any in collections, as far as I'm aware. Yeah. What you need to look for in history was mentions of what seemed to be dinosaur bones. As far as I'm aware, there's none. I wouldn't be shocked if any... In medieval history, at least. That's I, my, my... Yeah. Opinion. I wouldn't be shocked if it predated written history, and could. thus was oral tradition it that could, then got morphed into mythology. That would be my guess. It might be, but I feel like there aren't many Roman stories about dragons either. Well, they had like hydras and things like that. True, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to have to look into it. It's it's hard for me. I don't want to say anything with too much certainty because I'm a medievalist. I, I, I'm entirely speculative. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to look into it. It also depends on how you define a dragon. Which yeah. we'll probably define it in the European sense just because that's what we're the most familiar with. Yeah. Uh, what do you mean mammoth bones equals cyclops? Oh, uh, the, I'm um, familiar with it. so something about 
God, what was it? Something about the way that mammoth skulls look uh, is one thing that people believe may have led to the creation of Cyclops myth. Oh, because the hole for the trunk they yeah. thought was for an eye. Got it. Because if I remember correctly, it wasn't always that Cyclops necessarily had one eye, but that they had one in the middle of their head that was the big thing. But I Got might it. I might be mistaking that with something else. Um, but yeah, so let's uh, we're getting towards the end of the show here, so let's wrap yeah, up. Yeah, we've got uh red rose 509 for five dollars says have you heard the theory about dragons having hollow bones like birds oh we just did that yeah. um uh, all dragons are slept for two dollars says we already know what dragons are wink uh okay. wait no i don't think we did do the yeah that's what i thought bones. it just we I didn't guess, no was... yeah uh yes i do remember that i i watched a like discovery channel or history channel uh special on mm. like you know how dragons would have had to work if they were real which was really interesting. I wish I could find it again. I mean, we have pterodactyls. Like Fifteen years ago, though, there were pterodactyls in like flighted. Yeah. So the dinosaurs. Thing, oh, so. dragons as a concept, aside from the fire breathing, possible, yeah. entirely possible. Yeah. When? And yeah. What? And most importantly, how? Like, well, we had pterodactyls. Yes. The. They were going time difference away. between pterodactyl and St. George is pretty wide. Yeah, that's fair. That'd be cool. I mean, well, yeah, but at the same time, you know, crocodiles and yeah. alligators are literal dinosaurs. True, true. You know, so, yeah, if you want to. Yep. Uh, all dragons are sluts for $2 says we already know what dragons are. Yes, we do, based off of your name. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> Uh, Aquafan for 189 says Shin Godzilla from 2016, Toho film, amazing film. Okay, so I'm glad I was not losing my mind when I was thinking about that. Um, it's also making me want to rewatch that because I don't know if I've ever seen the full thing. Uh, Norbert Rodriguez Jr. for $2 says Parts 4 to 6 hold up the Tommy Jarvis story important. Or hold the Tommy Jarvis story important. Are we back to Friday the 13th? Yeah. Off, what I assume? Okay. Sorry, I I saw Tommy Jarvis and I thought of Bar Harley Jarvis from I Think You Should Leave. So, you know, uh, I just got a craving for an apple. <laughs> Weird. No, no. All right, yeah. This will be, I'll start with St. George. That's probably the place to start with. Somebody's dragons. referring to me as Ponytail. Ponytail? You, you are looking a little colonial. No, I'd be colonial if I do it down... Hang on. Down there? Yeah. Very colonial. Okay, yeah. It okay. only takes 3% of the population. Oh my god. <laughs> Look at what happened in Boston. We can't let it fly. We should do Boston again. They did Boston. What do you mean they? The British. No, we did that. What? No, not the tea party. Oh. The massacre. Oh, well. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not that. No. Ghastly. <laughs> <laughs> Good heavens. Good heavens. No. Have some decency, sir. <laughs> anyway, uh, Pumpkin Bear Seven for two dollars says Axe Man of Nola is actually a pretty good video to do. Axe Man of Nola. The there are so many things that people say exist that we should do that we just yeah keep forgetting to do. It. <laughs> so bad. Also, why does New Orleans have its own Axe Man? I don't know. That's a great question. Ooh, I managed to fix the kink. Uh, Red Rose 509 for $2 says, there's a bug that creates jet fuel could happen. I got rid I of the kink. I really am so glad that I didn't say the joke that just came into my head. Wait, uh, what? There's a bug that creates jet fuel could happen. Could have been me. <laughs> it could have been you. Yep. Anyway. It can soften them enough yes. for them to collapse. Yes. yes. Not right now. <laughs> uh, anyway, Brody Colt for $10 says, if you cover V for Vendetta, check out the graphic novel. I think I would have to. Yeah. Just to get the full story. Um, that is part of the problem is like the canon for all of these horror movies is kind of set out in novels a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. So. Bugs can't melt steel beams. Bugs can't melt steel beams. Incredible. They can't. Also, Vampire from Pluto, uh, great, great little non-super chat thing. Can we get a review of The Killers of the Flower Moon? I know you all cover a lot of Native American history, so I think it would be a good fit. Yeah, I'll have to look into it. I agree. Uh, there's also, I don't know if you know this, that it's based on a book. Yeah. I have the book. Okay. I haven't read it yet. But 
I want to. Okay. And it looks. Have you seen the trailer? No. It's Scorsese's late Scorsese's latest film. DiCaprio. Uh, a couple other big names are in it too. It looks really good. It's essentially how the feds like screwed the natives. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I'd be interested to watch. Yeah. Oh, De Niro's in it too. That's right. It's a lot of names. Yes. <laughs> a lot of good names. All right. Well, I think that makes that that means we're about through, which is nice because it's 9 30 p.m. Yep. All bedtime. right. <laughs> yes, bedtime. Okay, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. Um, you know, it's we're we're sorry that this was a later one. It is football season. Yeah. It is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. Anyway, uh, I have a homemade butternut squash soup calling my name. Ooh. Would you like some homemade butternut squash soup? I'm pretty full, but thank you. Okay. Um, I'll give you a little little taste. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, really? Thank you guys so much for hanging out. I hope you guys liked the video. Uh, I'm excited to see how you guys respond to the Blair Witch one that we're coming out with this uh, this coming week. And, uh, yeah. I'm excited because I'm going to be in month. it. Yeah, happy spooky month. Yeah, happy spooky month indeed. Go go to a haunted house for us. Yes. Uh, tell everybody to watch the lore log because it's spooky month. You know, you know how it is. Thank you so much for hanging out, and we will see you guys on the next one. Bye, guys.